<laughs> hey there, it's Lisa Rigsby, and welcome to The Secret Link to Love. And before we get started, I'd love to hear who's here, and also just to double check and make sure that the video and the audio are working well. So if you would just take a second to pop into the chat and just say hi and tell me who you are and where you're from, I would love to hear. So I'll take a peek at those. All right, let's so let's get started. My intention for you today is to get really, really a, a strong, renewed sense of faith in your ability to attract your partner, to call that person into your life. So I'm going to teach you some strategies and some tools. We're going to talk about beliefs and how they work. We're going to talk about how to get into the subconscious, how to shift those. And you're going to leave here with a set of tools that you can use to shift limiting beliefs, to shift trauma, things that something you can use in your life from here on out. So that's where we're at today. So I'd like to start with a meditation because it helps me to get anchored and centered and it'll help you to get anchored and centered in too. So go ahead and close your eyes and take a few long and deep breaths. It's coming into your body, into this present moment, into right here and now. Good. And I want you to bring your attention and your awareness to the base of your body, to your hips, your legs, your feet. And imagine growing roots like a tree down into the earth. Sending those roots down, down, down into the heart of the earth. And sending one long root straight down from the midline of your body all the way down and I like to imagine some sort of place to anchor that grounding cord, that root in the center of the earth. So imagining anchoring in, I like to imagine a big crystal there to wrap that grounding cord, that root around. And what this does is it brings you into present moment awareness. It brings you into your body. It brings you out of fight or flight and into a relaxed and centered state so that you can do energetic work and healing work and shift in an easier way. All right, good. So keeping that grounding cord really actively down, even if you have a hard time visualizing, just intend that you are rooted from the base of your body, from the midline of your body into the heart of the earth. And then keeping that root down, I want you to imagine a star way above your head. And that star represents the heart of source, the heart of the all, the heart of God, the heart of the universe, whatever word resonates most for you. And imagine golden light pouring down from that star into the top of your head and letting that golden light pour through the midline of your body all the way down to that grounding cord. So there's one continuous connection, one continuous light from the heart of the earth all the way through you into the heart of source and from the heart of source all the way through you into the heart of the earth. And this just gives you a very centered, connected way of being in the world. If you learn nothing else today, taking this column of light, this connection, and using that on a daily basis will shift the way that you move in the world, will shift the way that you carry yourself and how you run your energy. So just take a moment to breathe into that space. Again, intending that you are plugged into the heart of the earth and plugged into the heart of source. And then as you're ready, open your eyes. Okay. Good. So a few things today before we get started with our content. First thing, I want to invite you to come into this time together. We have less than an hour together. I want you to stay really present. So I know when there's a webinar on that it can be tempting to pop over to Facebook or to check your email. Really, I invite you to stay super present. So that means give yourself this time, give yourself this commitment, give yourself this way of being 
really in this moment of transformation around love and relationship. Okay, so I invite you to really be present. Second thing, you'll need a paper and pen. So I'm gonna have you do a couple of quick writing exercises that will help you to get into some of your deeper and subconscious beliefs. And then the other thing I'd like to invite you to do is to come with a, a beginner's mind. So I might share ideas that you've heard before or it might be brand new to you. Regardless, I invite you to have a beginner's mind to really be brand new in this. Act as if this is all new to you. And if it is, that's awesome. And if it's not, just really be open open to what comes through because you're here for a reason. You chose to be here. You signed up for this moment. And I don't believe that there are any accidents and there is an alignment that's happening here between you and I today. So be really open to receiving. And then if you have any questions, I'd love for you to just enter them in the chat box and Casey will collect them. My assistant Casey will collect them along the way and I will get to as many questions as I can before, at the end of the call. So when we're completely finished, I'll get to as many questions as, I, as we have time for. So as we're going along, just pop your questions in and then we'll get to them from there. All right, so I want to start by telling you a bit about my story and who I am and how I became the energetic matchmaker and what got me into relationship work in the first place. And of course, for me, it comes from my own personal experience in love and relationship. I, I fell in love for the first time when I was 15 years old, and that was the first time that I felt really seen and whole and complete and I was really attached to that feeling. I, in fact, I was addicted to that feeling. And when my family moved away and that relationship ended, I went seeking that feeling. I wanted to feel that wholeness again. I wanted to feel that completeness again. I wanted to feel loved and seen. And I thought that I had to get that through a partner. So I bounced from relationship to relationship to relationship looking for that. But the problem was I had these deep unknown to me at the time, subconscious beliefs that said that I wasn't good enough, that I wasn't worthy enough, that I wasn't cool enough for a good relationship, that I wasn't valuable enough, and really deep down that I wasn't worthy of being really loved. And so I ended up in a lot of dysfunctional relationships and I lost myself completely in each one. So I would morph into whatever I thought that partner wanted me to be in order to keep that relationship. So I dated a surfer and I became a complete surfer girl, you know, long blonde hair and bright pink lipstick and mini skirt. This is the late eighties. And then the next boyfriend was a grunge rocker and I dyed my hair burgundy, got a tattoo, put Doc Martens on. The next boyfriend was a sailor. So I got blonde again and white pants, going to the yacht club. And I just Completely, I had no idea who I was in this journey until the last relationship that I had before my husband Craig. I ended up 25 pounds overweight and smoking cigarettes and feeling really miserable about myself. And I was in a relationship with a guy who actually had hit me once, who was emotionally and verbally abusive almost every day. And I was at an incredible low point in my life. And I took a step back and I realized that I was really overwhelmed and uh, just like fed up and done. And I didn't know what to do, but I knew I couldn't keep going in this way. And so I ended that relationship and I took a really long and hard look at my life and realized that I was the common denominator in all of these relationships. I was the one who was creating these situations and I didn't know how, and I didn't know what I was doing, but I decided to go on an investigative journey and figure it out because I'd had enough insight into spiritual thinking and the law of attraction to have some awareness about it. And so I went on a spiritual journey and I shifted and cleared my beliefs and my blocks and I did a ton of healing work. And then I was able to attract my husband, my partner, Craig, who is an amazing shift for me in everything I've ever been, in every type of person I've ever been with. He is incredibly present. He is open hearted. He is on his own spiritual journey. And I wouldn't have been able to attract a man like him without having done my own inner work. And then in my own practice, I was a college professor in my own professional life. I was a college professor for years and I was engaged in healing practices on the side. I was engaged in intuitive work and Reiki and spiritual counseling, anything I could get my hands on. And then I finally decided to leave that world and move into my healing practice full time. And I saw that my clients kept coming to me with relationship issues. And when we finished our work together, they would end up in these great relationships. And so I realized that there was 
a specific series of steps that I had gone through in my own life to make the shift to be open and receive my husband, Craig. And the same, the same steps and the same actions and the same energetic practices were what I was taking my clients through. And then they were ending up in these great relationships. And so that evolved into Soulmate School, which is a course that I've created and I'll tell you a little bit more about later. And that was how the Energetic Matchmaker was born. So that's my background. I'm really very focused on using energetic practices and tools to get to the deeper subconscious and energetic blocks that I think are the main reason that most women are still single when they don't want to be. So, all right, so let's start by diving into our content. So let me get the first slide up here for you. And here we go. All right, let me turn my video off so it's not so distracting. All right, so beliefs and your reality. All right, so the first thing I want to talk about is how your external reality is a reflection of your internal beliefs. So sometimes this can be confusing because you might say, well, I believe that I'm worthy of a good relationship or I feel like a partner, I'm ready for my partner. I feel like I'm I'm open to it and it's all, I'm ready and I, there's no blocks there. But what happens is that we have subconscious beliefs that are running the show underneath the surface. And depending on what research you read, the subconscious is responsible for 90 to 98% of the brain activity. And so when you have an affirmation, say you say a positive affirmation, I deserve love, but you have a subconscious belief that says the opposite, the subconscious belief is actually stronger and wins. And the problem is it's really hard to access those subconscious beliefs, which is by the nature, right? By their nature, they're subconscious, they're unconscious, they're not accessible to you in the conscious mind, but they are actively creating your reality. So the way that these subconscious beliefs, these limiting beliefs around love were created are, are through your childhood experiences. So something happened in childhood that creates a belief and then that belief becomes really deeply embedded in you. You, you, become, you believe that it's true and then you experience responses from the world that reinforce that belief. So for example, when I was in third grade, I moved. We moved from one, one state to another, and it was halfway through the year. And the teacher in the new school did not like me. And then there was also a girl there who was very popular. Her name was Jan. And all the kids liked her. All the girls liked her. And she decided to pick on me. I was a new kid. And before that, before we had moved, I felt really confident. I felt smart and pretty. I had lots of friends. I felt really good about myself. And when we got to this to the new school, when I met with when I met Jandra and all of this crew, she said to me at one point, Oh, you should like Bobby because Bobby is not popular or cool like you. And so you guys would be a good match. And so I decided in that moment, oh, I'm not popular or cool. I didn't know that before. Huh. Okay. I'm not popular or cool. And that belief stuck with me all the way through. And in fact, there was another moment where she said something about me not being pretty along the way. You know, she definitely had a thing for me. So she said something about me not being pretty and that belief got stuck as well. So here I am, third grade, I decide that I'm not popular, I'm not cool, and I'm not pretty. And those beliefs stuck with me all the way through into my adulthood. In fact, I met Craig, my husband, seven years before we got together and I had a total crush on him at the time, but I literally thought I wasn't cool enough to be with him. He was in a band and all of the girls he dated were rockers and like really cool chicks and I was not cool enough. So even then, even in my, you know, mid twenties, I was still really running this belief that I wasn't cool enough to have what I wanted. I wasn't cool enough for a cool guy. I could only get the default guy. And so that belief really stuck through me, stuck with me. I, another example from a client of mine is she kept attracting really serious men into her life. She, um, and she really wanted to be with a playful guy, but she kept attracting boring guys. Everybody she went on a date with was really boring. Well, it turns out she had been abused as a child and her abuser was really playful. So when she was four years old, she created a belief that men who were playful were dangerous. And so then that, of course allowed her or didn't allow her to be able to attract a playful man into her life because that subconscious belief said, no, no, playful men are dangerous. So these beliefs 
get created from sometimes a very seemingly innocuous situation or a small situation, but then they stick. And because that belief then gets reflected back to you, you have this experience that of having this imprint of that belief. So it's like an energetic imprint. And these experiences of, of trauma or that moment of where someone says something to you or uh, a challenging experience or something that happened with one of your parents, that creates an energetic imprint. And then that imprint is a magnet for a match. It's a magnet for that same experience to be reinforced to you. So what happens then is you, your ego, your belief system says, oh, that must be true because I keep having the experience that shows me I'm not cool enough, or I keep having the experience that shows me I'm not pretty enough or I'm not good enough. I keep having the experience of attracting the same thing over and over again. And what happens is we have what I like to call a pathway that gets created from that belief. So you have this belief and it's like, if you imagine a field of grass and you imagine a path that gets walked back and forth and that path gets really well trodden and very clear, and that's the path of a belief. And the more that you have that belief reinforced, the stronger that pathway gets. And this is actually true in the brain with neural pathways. So I like to imagine it as this grass pathway. But then when we start to clear those beliefs, new grass grows on that old pathway and you start to walk a new pathway, create a new belief. And eventually, as you shift that old belief into the new belief, you can create a new, a new pathway, even a new neural pathway within your mind. And then that new belief gets created. And as that new belief gets created, you have a different experience in your external reality. So I want you to really hear that. So you have the power to change your beliefs. And as you change your beliefs, you change your reality. So if you want to start to have a sense of what your, what your subconscious beliefs are, start to look at your past relationships. Take a moment just to think about your past relationships. You might even want to jot this down. And what are some of the patterns that you see in your own past relationships? And those patterns will start to tell you what you've been attracting into your life. And from that, you can start to ferret out, okay, what are the beliefs that are there that I might not be aware of that are creating this pattern? So, for example, I had a client who kept attracting men who just took from her, didn't give. They were continuously men who wanted to, to be taken care of, who wanted to receive from her, but they never ever gave anything back to her. And so she saw this pattern over and over again. And then as we worked together and as she worked with these steps, she recognized that she learned in childhood that she was valuable and she was lovable when she was giving. So she believed that to be worthy of love, she had to be giving. So of course she was going to attract people who only saw her as worthy by their receiving, so their giving. So she learned that receiving was selfish, but giving was loving. And so she kept attracting these men who were takers until she shifted that belief of being able to receive within herself. And now she's with an amazing partner who is very generous. They're both generous both ways. There's a lot of give and receiving, giving and receiving on both ends. So it took her shifting that belief pattern in order to create and attract what she wanted in her life. So some of the common beliefs that I see with my clients really have to do with this either the external of what's going on in the world. So there's the, you know, all of the good men are taken or what I'm looking for in a man is too good to be true or the city I live in doesn't have enough single men. So there's sort of this environmental belief system. And then there's the beliefs that come down to more of a physical within the body. So I need to change something around my physicality. Maybe I need to lose some weight before I can have a partner, or I'm not pretty enough to have a partner, or I'm not tall enough or short enough or whatever it is, some sort of physicality that needs to change. And then underneath those are the beliefs that are the deeper, more emotional ones that would be something along the lines of, I'm not worthy of love, or I'm, I'm not valuable, or no one's ever going to love me in this life. 
So what I want to do right now is I want to take a moment to, to feel into one of the beliefs that I see really commonly, which is that I'm not pretty enough. And I'm going to switch back here, uh, off, back to the video for a moment. So I want you to think about that belief of I'm not pretty enough for a good relationship. And so that's one that I carried with me and it's one that's really common. And if, if that's not one for you, it, find one that is, I'm not blank enough. And then just make that, state that out loud. I'm not pretty enough or I'm not blank enough, whatever it is. And then close your eyes, come back to your column of light, really feel that support and that connection. And I want you to feel into your body that sensation that comes up when you make that statement and get really present. This is where you might want to start checking out. Don't check out. Stay really present. Stay right here and just feel the feeling of it. And then ask yourself, when did I feel this last? When's the last time I felt this before right now? And just see what comes up. First thought that comes into your mind. And then before that, what's the time before that that I felt this? And see what comes up there. And then maybe another time back before that. And just see how this feeling sense of that belief is something that has probably been with you for a long time. And if you keep asking, when, when did I feel it before that? When did I feel it before that? You'll most likely come to a place, and you might not get there today, but if you keep exploring this, you'll most likely come to a place somewhere in your childhood or possibly your early teens where that belief got created. So that's the way to start to unravel and unhook and unplug from these beliefs is to back up, back up, back up until you can find the place, like for me with, with Jan, coming back to that place of, oh, she told me I wasn't cool, I wasn't pretty, I wasn't popular. And I believe that. Before that time, I didn't know that that was true. I had nothing, I had no limiting belief around those things. But at that moment in time, I took that belief and it became part of me. So I want you to take a moment right now, and I'm going to give you an exercise. Let me come back to my slide here for just a sec. And I want you to take your paper and a pen and I want you to write down all of the reasons why you're single. All of the reasons why you think you're single and just brainstorm. I'm going to give you a couple minutes here. Your mind might want to check out here. You might want to, you might want to avoid this question. Stay with it. Avoid the temptation to go do something else. Really stay with it. I'm going to give you a minute or two here. And stay with this question and just really write down anything that comes to mind. It might even surprise you. And just let yourself be really open to whatever wants to come through. And just keep going. And if you have, if you're finding that you're looking at the sort of external environment or the external within yourself, just see if there's anything that might come up within yourself as well. Maybe a deeper belief about how you feel about yourself or what you think might be true. And just take another minute or, you know, not even a minute, <laughs> take another few seconds to finish up. And then I want you to star the one that is the most emotional for you, the strongest for you. Good. Okay. So just pick one. Pick the one that's the strongest. 
And we're going to come back to that in just a moment. Okay. Oh, I stopped. I stopped sharing, but I want to go to the next slide. So let me come back there. Okay. All right. So what I want to talk about next is the fact that beliefs are changeable. So we're going to come back to the beliefs, those beliefs that you wrote down, and we're going to work with how to change them. And beliefs really need to shift at an energetic level in order to change at a physical level. So when you offer a new belief, for example, if you have a positive affirmation and you offer a new belief and you're trying to state a new belief while the old one is still present, like I said before, that old pathway is really strong. And so that new belief doesn't stick. It doesn't work in the way that you want it to. And so we have to get rid of the original pathway first. We have to let the grass grow up on that old pathway first before you can really shift and create that strong new pathway. So some of the tools that I have seen that are really valuable in changing this are tools that are based in energy psychology. And so those, the, some of the tools are emotional freedom technique known as EFT, Thought field therapy, TFT, EMDR, matrix re-imprinting. There's all kinds of different modalities to really help you shift at the energetic and the subconscious level. And it's really an exciting time because it's like we're bridging, we're bridging all of these spiritual and Eastern and energetic protocols with modern psychology. So it's a really powerful combination that's coming together. And today we're going to focus on. EFT, Emotional Freedom Technique. I'm going to share that with you today because it's a really great first step and people often experience shifts with EFT quite quickly. It's, and it's a really powerful, great foundational tool to start using and you can take it and you can use it from here. So you can, you can use it for not only for clearing beliefs and working with what we're working on today around love and relationship, but you can use this, these steps and this strategy that I'm going to share with you now for pretty much anything in your life that you want to clear. It's a really powerful tool. So I want to talk to you right now about how to use it. I'm going to share with you how to start with the tapping, how it works, and, and uh, a bit about the background of it. So before we go on with that, let me just come back to EFT. Sorry, I got a little ahead of myself in my flow. So EFT, Emotional Freedom Technique, is a strategy that is based on tapping on the acupuncture points or the, the acupuncture meridian. So there are channels or pathways of energy through our body that are called meridians in Chinese medicine. And those meridians are like, I see them like energetic rivers or creeks through the body. And when we have a trauma or when we have a a limiting belief or a challenging experience, it's, it shows up as a block in that energetic pathway. It's like if you think of a river or a creek and there's a stagnant pool, for example, that is like an energetic block. And then when new water comes in, it washes that old stagnant water out, that old stagnant energy out and brings fresh water into that area. So the same thing is true when you're working with the meridians. When you are tapping or when you receive acupuncture, you're bringing in, you're bringing in fresh new chi or a life force into those stuck areas. So the way that EFT works is we're going to speak some of the limiting beliefs, or we're going to use one of the limiting beliefs today, and you tap on various points while you're speaking that limiting belief. And what it does is it opens up the meridians, it opens up the life force, it opens up the chi to move through your body and clear those stuck places and clear those blocks. So the way that I got into using tapping modalities is through, my husband actually is an acupuncturist and he started using it on himself a long time ago. And I thought, that's kind of crazy. You're tapping and you're saying the things that aren't true or you don't want to be true. It didn't make sense to me. And I was really sort of skeptical about it because it didn't seem, it, it contradicted my knowing of the law of attraction because I was, my awareness of the law of attraction was just stay focused, stay on, only say what you want, only speak in conscious language, don't say anything negative. But what I found to be true after my own experience with, with having a session in, in EFT from a friend of mine is 
I had a massive shift and a massive transformation of something that was really stuck for me in one session. And I was a convert at that point. I was sold. And so I learned EFT right away and I started using it with my clients as soon as I could and started seeing really massive shifts. So what I've learned is that you can't, you can't just override those hidden places with conscious language or with positive affirmations because they're still there and they're still functioning. You've got to bring those up to the surface, clear them, and then you can bring in the new beliefs and the new strategies. Okay, so what I want to do right now is I want to show you the points and then we're going to move through an exercise. So let me get back to my video here. Okay, so you're going to use your hands to tap and the first point is called the karate chop point. You're going to use four fingers of one hand and just tap right here on that side of your hand. And if you're just listening, it's between your wrist and your pinky on the side of your hand, that spot that you would use to chop a karate, if you were gonna chop a block in half in karate. So that's the first point. The second point is the top of your head, right in the middle. And then you're gonna tap right on the inside of your eyebrow. So you can use one hand or both on the inside of your eyebrow right there. And then the outside of your eye, right on that bone. And then you're gonna tap under your eye and under your nose and tap right on your chin there between your lip and your chin. And then the collarbone, it's right here and it's, you'll feel like a groove, an indentation. And I like to use four fingers just to make sure you're getting it. So tap right in there. And then under your arm, right at the, I'll back up a little so you can see, it's right at the bra strap mark. <laughs> okay. And then you're gonna tap your wrists together And then we're gonna use one more spot that is called the gamut spot. And that's right here between your pinky and your ring finger on the back of your hand in that groove between the bones, right in the back of your hand. So the four fingers of the opposite hand, just tap right there. Okay. So now I want you to come back to that belief that you start. So find your start belief and come back to it. And I'm going to use, I'm not worthy of love. So I'm going to use that as an example. And I want you to either use the starred belief or I'm not worthy of love, whichever one feels stronger for you in this moment. Okay. And you're going to tap on the side of your hand right here and say out loud, even though I believe, and you can insert your belief here, or even though I believe that I'm not worthy of love, I'm open and available to this changing. And keep tapping on the side of your hand. Even though a part of me believes that I'm not worthy of love, I still completely accept myself. And even though a part of me believes that I'm not worthy of love, I'm open to transformation. And then tap the top of your head and really feel this belief, this feeling of whatever it is it's the one that you're working with either not being worthy of love or whatever belief is the strongest for you right now and just take a moment as you tap the top of your head and really feel it in your body let yourself become fully aware of it and tap the inside of your eyebrow and just imagine if it looked like something what it would look like that belief really notice where you feel, what you feel in your body. If there's a particular place that feels contracted, I'm just making that statement out loud, I'm not worthy of love. And just notice where you feel it. I tend to feel that one in my solar plexus. And then tap on the outside of your eye. And just again, really bringing your total awareness to the feeling of it in your being, in your body. And keep tapping, be really present, be courageous, stay with it. If it had a color, what would the color be? Tap under your eye. If it had a shape, what shape would it be? Just close your eyes and really imagine this feeling of I'm not worthy of love. 
So for me, it's like a big black ball in my solar plexus. And then tap under your nose, really feel it. I'm not worthy of love. And just make that statement again, I'm not worthy of love while tapping under your nose. And then tap on your chin. And if this, whatever shape, texture, color, if this belief, I'm not worthy of love, could speak to you, what would it say? Just really get present with it. And take a breath. I know this can be a little uncomfortable to feel into that sensation, but it's a really powerful way to shift it. And then tap the collarbone. Getting really present with that sensation, that feeling of I'm not worthy of love. And then tap under your arm, I'm not worthy of love. And tap your wrists together like this. And you're tapping kind of about mm, that far down. <laughs> really feel it. What you're doing as you're tapping is you're bringing fresh energy flow to this belief. And then tap on the gamut spot on the back of your hand. Now close your eyes and just tap the side of your hand and close your eyes. Your eyes are closed and <laughs> take a breath and just notice the feeling that you have. And now I wanna help you start to drop into some of the subconscious beliefs of why you feel like you're not worthy of love. So what I want you to do now is I want you to let anything that comes out to just flow. So tap the top of your head and say, I'm not worthy of love because. And just whatever words come out of your mouth, let them come out. Don't censor anything. Inside of your eyebrow. I'm not worthy of love because. And just let it all, let it come out, whatever it is. Even if it's I don't know, just say that. Just let yourself speak outside of your eye. I'm not worthy of love because. Under your eye, I'm not worthy of love because. Under your nose, I'm not worthy of love because. Chin, I'm not worthy of love because. Collarbone, stay really present. I know you might want to start checking out here. Stay really present. I'm not worthy of love because. Under your arm, I'm not worthy of love because. And then tap your wrists together. I'm not worthy of love because. Okay, just take a breath. Stop tapping and take a breath into that. And just notice if anything surprised you, if anything came up, if there's any emotions coming to the surface, that's actually really good if emotions are coming up because that means you've hit a place where you're, you're actually, it's like you're in that stagnant pool, you've hit that spot. So that's great if emotions are coming up. Stay with it, just go ahead and tap the side of your hand. If emotions aren't coming up, you can continue to explore this. You're gonna have access to this webinar. This video is not going down. You can have access to it anytime. So you'll be able to come back and do it again and keep going until you can find some of those places where you hit the emotion because hitting the emotion is where you make the, you make the shift occur. 
And it's not that you're not shifting anything when you don't hit the emotions. You're, it's like you're bringing, you're bringing light into the area. You're bringing a, like a trickle in. You're bringing energy in. And then when you hit the emotion, it allows for like a, a fresh surge, a full, a full surge to move through. Okay. So that's the way that we start to bring, uh, release and soften the old pathways to reduce their strength is by tapping into them, speaking them, and tapping at the same time. And you may not get full release today, and that's okay. You can come back and practice again and again. But I want you to have the tools that you can use to come back and really start to, to take the power out of those old limiting beliefs that have been sabotaging you in your love life. Okay, so now I want to give you a bit of a shift I want to, to begin to start to make, even though we haven't maybe fully cleared that one, I want you to have the experience of what it's like to start a new pathway, to start a new positive belief system, okay? So I want you to, again, close your eyes, come into yourself, come into your column of light, tap the side of your hand, and I want you to really think about, I am completely lovable. Just say that out loud. I am completely lovable. I know you don't quite believe it yet, maybe. I don't always believe it 100%. It's, this is a belief that we all are constantly working through. We have different layers and different levels of it. <laughs> There's always that little part. Uh, oh, I want to just, okay, just stop for one moment. I think this is an important piece because it might be a trigger that's coming up. Just open your eyes and we'll come back to this new place in a moment. So I want you to think about if you're coming up against something that you've come up against before or you're working with something that you've worked with before. So for me, I'm not worthy of love. I've worked with that a lot, right? That's a, that's a belief that is still clearing. It's cleared a lot. It's a, been a massive shift and I am so much more self-loving than I used to be, like a hundred times more. But there's still a little piece there. And so when something comes up for you, again, don't feel like, Oh, I, why isn't this clearing or haven't I worked on this already? Healing is like a spiral. So it's like, like going like this upward and it gets wider and wider and wider. So if we're looking at that piece of not being lovable, say that's at three o'clock on the spiral, you're going to hit that in the beginning of your journey. You're going to hit that often. You're going to hit it all the time. But then as you go further in your healing, as you go further in your spiritual journey, you're going to hit that space, but with a different perspective and a different vantage point and a higher viewpoint. So for me, when I hit now, I'm not lovable. Yeah, I can feel the place and I can bring it up, but it doesn't take me into that same level of denseness and intensity as it used to because I've been working with it. So as we, as we continue up the spiral, we might hit that same issue, our karmic issues or our, whatever our patterns are in this life. We might hit those issues over and over again, but it's with a renewed or a different perspective and more life and more life force there. So be gentle with yourself if you're coming up against something that you feel like you've worked with before. Okay. All right. So let's come back to this feeling of being loved. I want you to have that sensation and start that new pathway. So tap the side of your hand. And I want you to imagine what it would feel like to be completely lovable. Tap the top of your head. What would it look like? What would the sensation be if you knew that you were 100% worthy of love? Every cell of your body knew it inside of your eyebrow. What would it feel like? Really imagine it. What would it smell like to be lovable? What would it taste like? Tap the outside of your eye. What would it sound like? What would be the sound of your life if you were knew that you were 100% lovable? Under the eye, really feel it in your body. What's the color that would move through your body if you were lovable? And just let that start to come through. And I want you to imagine that light that comes down into your crown from source under your nose, chin, filling you with love. I want you to imagine golden light pouring into the top of your head that is love. And let that love move through your whole body now. And then tap on your collarbone, really feeling the sensation of what it would be like to know you're 100% lovable. And then tap under your arm, feeling that lovableness. <laughs> is that a word? I'm not sure. <laughs> it is now. And then tap your wrists together, really feeling, okay, this is what it would feel like to know that I'm 100% worthy of love. 
And just take a moment to oh, take a deep breath into that space. Feeling that connection from your column of light, feeling that love pouring down from source into your crown. And asking that you are, I am asking that you are wrapped in sheets of rainbow light. So imagine that you are being wrapped in sheets of rainbow light, sealing in this connection to love. Anchoring in the intention of deep self-love, faith, belief, trust in love, and trust in your ability to create the relationship of your dreams. Anchoring these intentions in at your core column of light. And so it is. So take a breath into that. Move your body a little bit, fingers and toes, stretch. And then as you're ready, open your eyes. Good. All right, so I want you to feel into what we've done today or so far and just ask, is this resonant for me? Does this feel like a fit for me? Does this, does this work light me up? Does this feel like, yes, this is a match. This is what I'm looking for. And if not, I want to say thank you so much for coming. And there are a ton of resources for that are free on my website and feel free to explore those. And if it has resonated with you, if this feels like a, a hit in your body that feels like a yes, I want to invite you to listen with me for a moment or two while I share about an upcoming program that I have called Soulmate School. And what we've done today is part of one of the six steps of Soulmate School. So Soulmate School is a program that I've created from my heart for you to have a quantum shift in the way that you have, the way that you experience love, the way that you live your life, the way that you are able to, in attracting the partner that you want. I've created this for that. I sometimes I get a little tongue tied after I've been in the deep energetic realms there. So let me take a few moments to share about Soulmate School with you. It's coming up starting May 2nd, and then I'll get to your questions in just a moment. Okay, so let me move to the slides here. And, and you can head over, if you'd like, you can head over to soulmateschool.com and follow along there, or you can follow along here with the slides with me. So Soulmate School includes six 75-minute classes. The first one is Reclaim Your Own Heart, and then we have Break Up With Your Love Limits. Let me turn my video off so I'm not distracting you. And then which is number two is the one that we've covered a bit of today. And then the third week is making space for love. The fourth one is letting love in. And I'll talk about each of these in just a moment. The fifth one is how to understand a good man and then activate your love vibration. And then we have four 60 minute live group coaching calls with me. And I will be answering your questions about love and relationships. So we'll get on the phone four times over the six weeks. I'll be live on the line. You type in your answers or you can, you can raise your hand and speak to me if you like and ask me your questions about love and relationship. And this is the last time that I'm going to be teaching Soulmate School live where I'll have these live calls. I've been called to make space for some new programs and events that are coming through. So this is the last time that I'm going to be teaching Soulmate School live. So if you want to have that live access to me, this is the time to take Soulmate School. Also, we're going to have a private Facebook women's circle to connect with really amazing women. There's, in the past, this community has been really powerful. I get on there regularly and answer questions, and there's just a great support system of beautiful women from all over the world connecting here. And then all of the classes are recorded. All of the meditations are recorded. I don't have it on here, but all of the classes are also transcribed. So if you're a visual learner, that's there. Plus, there's a ton of bonuses. There's a just, it's really chock full of information. And Soulmate School is a program that I really believe in. It, women all over the world have found their soulmates through taking this program. So I can stand behind it 100%. And I'm super excited to share it with you. All right. So the first week is Reclaim Your Own Heart. And in this class, we really learn how to stand in that connection, that confident connection with yourself. And I teach a really powerful tool in this class to help you release that fear of judgment and stand in that embodiment of all of the beauty that you are. Week two is breaking up with your love limits. And that's the one that is, again, a, an extension of what we've covered today. So really diving into clearing those blocks. We also work with the inner critic and help her to work with you and not against you so that you can release those limiting beliefs and attract love into your life. The third week is making space for love, and that's where I teach you how to energetically clear out old lovers, 
old blocks, anything that's in the way, toxic relationships, any past partnerships that didn't serve you, clearing those out so you can make room for your partner. And if you have had any experiences of sexual abuse or sexual trauma, I give you a sacred healing ritual in this step to help you heal from that. So that is week three. Week four is learning how to let love in, learning how to receive. So often women are really great at giving but don't know how to receive. And you have to be able to receive to let a good, a good man in. And we also look at the wall around your heart and how to let that wall gently down so that you can open up to love. Because oftentimes that same part of you that is yearning for love is also pushing love away by keeping that protection up. So we look at that protective layer and learn how to clear it and let it down. Week five is how to understand a good man. This is where I really teach you how to trust masculine energy, how to understand quality men and how they think. And there's a really fabulous additional bonuses on this that I'll share with you in just a moment, but how to really be able to feel safe with a masculine man and attract that kind of man into your life. And then week six is activate your love vibration. So this is learning how to shine your own light, how to shine your radiance, how to activate that vibration that is unique to you, your own essence, so that your partner can see you, so they can find you, so they can be drawn to you. Because if you're hiding your light, it's really hard for your true partner to find you. And then bonuses for Soulmate School. There is the man panel, which is a call where I've interviewed four of the highest caliber men I know sharing what quality men really look for in relationship. I've interviewed Matt Boggs, the creator of Cracking the Man Code. He shares his man scan, which teaches you how to tell if a man's interested in you. This is a really powerful tool. There's audio recordings, as I said, of the, all the courses, but also of all of the powerful energetic tools and healing meditations. You can download them and have them as separate MP3 files to listen to at any time. There is a recommended reading and resource list. There's a powerful instructional video. Again, there's transcripts. And I also am known to add a lot of bonuses and surprises along the way as we go. So I usually add more along. So Soulmate School starts on May 2nd. And it is three ninety seven or three payments of one thirty seven. And when you bring a girl f or when you enroll by April twenty seventh, you can bring a friend for free. And the reason I do this is that I want to make it first of all. I want to make it affordable to anybody who wants to participate. So when you split that cost, it really brings it down to you know less than two hundred dollars a month each, or less than you know sixty nine dollars a month if you split the payments three times. So. The other thing I find is when you're shifting and making transformation, it's really powerful to do it with a friend. So when you bring a friend for free, you can bring a friend for free by April 27th. And the other thing is, as I said before, I really believe in this program. I, I have taught it many, many times. I've seen the results over and over again. And so I have a 100% satisfaction guarantee. So if you fully commit and you give it your all, and by the beginning of the fourth week, so halfway through, you feel like you haven't had a fundamental change in the way you view yourself and your ability to create a life of love, you can just speak to our team and we'll gladly refund your tuition. Right, and then I have a couple of early bird bonuses because I find that when women who are would, that women who are really ready to commit and they really know like this is for me, I find that those women have the biggest transformation, and so I like to honor that and to give a few extra bonuses. So the first three women to sign up for Soulmate School will get a free twenty minute private session with me. So we'll meet on the conference line. You and I will have a one on one twenty minute session. You can ask me anything you like. Can work through any blocks that might be there for you. So the first three women to sign up. So if you want that, it's probably already going right now. So the first three women to sign up will get that free 20-minute session with me. And then anyone who signs up before midnight on Wednesday, so midnight tomorrow night, is invited to participate in a private intimate group coaching call with me. And I'm going to share a group healing and also get to everyone's individual questions. So give you that one-on-one -on -one time. And I'll offer this call twice to make sure that all the time zones are accommodated. Okay. So let me come back to... So that's, let me come back to this. So that's Soulmate School. If it feels like a yes to you, if it feels like you're, you're ready to make a big shift and you're ready to commit and you know that the time is now, go ahead and head over to soulmateschool.com and join us. I'm so excited to be sharing that with you. And if you know now is not the right time for you, then please feel free to explore my site and dig around with all of the free tools and resources that are there. And I'm so happy you were here today. 
So I want to just come back to our you know, overview here just for a moment, and then I'll get to any questions that you might have. So if you have any questions, uh, feel free to pop those into the chat box. Oops, sorry, what am I doing here? <laughs> Stop the share. <laughs> I got distracted. All right, let me come back to the sharing my screen because I want to go through the slide that has our last overview of what we've covered today. Let me get there. Oh, to go through all of them. There we go. All right. So in reviewing what we've covered today, first off, your internal belief is reflected in your external reality. So that is really what's running the show in your love life. So really being aware that if something isn't showing up the way that you want it to, it's because there's something going on within your energetic system or within your subconscious beliefs that need to shift. Your childhood experiences is where those beliefs were created. And then those experiences create imprints and those imprints are a magnet for that match. And I want to say one more thing about this piece here. And I think that when we have those experiences where we keep repeating that same pattern over and over again, I think it's the soul saying, okay, it's time to wake up. Here's the wound. Here's the place. And so if you keep attracting, say, unavailable men, for example, over and over again, it's that part that is within you that says, okay, I'm not really... I'm, not, I'm a little bit afraid of having it all in relationship. So that unavailable man that keeps showing up over and over is your soul saying, see, here it is. Here's the place we want to work on. Here's the place to heal. So those imprints that keep repeating themselves are your soul's calling for awakening and healing. And then again, that belief gets strengthened because of those experiences that get repeated. And then beliefs need to change at an energetic level to change at a physical level. So you've got to shift it energetically. Just words is not enough. You've got to use an energetic tool or an energetic way of shifting those beliefs in order to see a change in the external reality. And then, of course, I share there's a lot of tools within energy psychology to change. Today, we focused on emotional freedom technique. There's lots of resources out there on EFT. You can search the web and find out tons about it. And then you build the new belief pathway by once you shift the old belief, then you're building the new belief pathway. You're using that new belief to create a new pathway. And then as you change your beliefs, you can change your whole love life. You can change and attract exactly what you want into your life. And it is possible for you. I have no doubt about that. So I want you to really know that. I want you to really hear and see and know that you have the capacity to make an internal shift within yourself that will change what you're experiencing in your love life. And you have a partner that is out there for you. And all you need to do is really dive in and make those internal shifts so that you can change the external reality and attract what you want into your life. So I'm so excited to support you in that if that feels like a calling for you. And hopefully you've enjoyed today's webinar. And now I want to see if there are any questions available. I'm going to pop on over to the chat and see if there's anything there. Okay. All right. Mm. Okay, so the first question is from Laura. Why does it seem that only the negative experiences stick and not the positive ones? <laughs> yeah, that's a great question, Laura. I think... I think what happens is, is when we have a negative experience and we have that traumatic, uh, it's like a glitch, it's like an energy in the body. So when you have positive experiences, the energy is flowing. It feels like a normal flow. You're in that place of, I'm in the flow, everything's moving. And then when you have a negative experience, to me, it's like a kink in the hose. It just glitches the, the, the energy system and it gets stuck. And so bringing your awareness to your positive experiences. And I think this is one of the things that is really helpful in conscious thinking and conscious language is to keep your focus and your awareness on those positive experiences, but also to 
be sure that you dive into and uncover those negative ones so that they can get unstuck. And I think that the reason that they, they stick is because we usually tend to not want to feel them. So when a negative experience happens, we kind of go, oh, I'm going to put that away. I don't want to feel that. And we shove it down and then it gets stronger. It's like you put it in the drawer, you shut the drawer, you <laughs> then you like put a brick wall over the dresser and then you wallpaper over that, but it's still there. And when those negative experiences and traumas aren't being dealt with, they actually fester and get stronger and, and start to really uh, rear up and sabotage you and, and show up in your life in really powerful ways in the external. Okay. So another question is from Susan. Are there practices that can help me learn how to listen to my intuition? Yes, for sure. So the more that you get into that column of light that we were talking about in the beginning, the more that you get into that space of, of alignment and connection, the easier it is to hear. But also I think what happens is when we have a lot of stuck places, when we have a lot of limiting beliefs or we have a lot of traumatic experiences stuck in our energy field, it makes it really hard to hear the true intuition. What we're usually hearing is fear. And so it's hard to distinguish what's true intuition and what's fear talking because all of those energetic blocks are in the way. So I think that one of the things that's really important in order to hear your intuition is to continue to clear and dive in and do the energetic work that needs to happen to make more of a, of a clear channel. And as you are more of a clear channel within your own system, you'll be able to hear and know your own energetics. You'll be able to hear your, um, you'll hear your own intuition. So thank you for that. Okay, another question from Alicia. Let's see. Ah, I'm putting my glasses on upside down. <laughs> All right. What can I do to move on from my past relationship? Uh, well, that's exactly the step that we cover. That's what we cover in lesson three in Soulmate School, making space for love. Oh, I'm going to cough. Excuse me. <coughs> Excuse me. Sorry about that. Having some spring allergy. Mm. But one thing I can share with you, Alicia, without going too in depth, it's a pretty big process to move on, is to start to look at what is in your physical reality that needs to shift. So is there, are there still things that you're holding on to physically? Do you still really connect with them in social media? Are you still holding on to text messages? Let all of that stuff go and that will really help you to move on. And then I share a really powerful energetic practice for that in Soulmate School and Making Space for Love. Okay, let's see. Oh, another question from Lisa. Do alumni get access to Soulmate School this time around? Yes. So Soulmate School, if you're a Soulmate School alumni, you always have access to every new round of Soulmate School. So that's one thing I wanted to share with everybody as well, is that once you, once you have purchased Soulmate School, you have access to it for the life of the program. So it doesn't go away. There's no timeline. It's not like after the six weeks you're done, you have access to it forever. So yes, and if you're an alumni, you can always come back and then join. Uh, question from Chris. I'm in a relationship. Can I still come to soulmate school? Yes, absolutely. I'm glad you asked that, Chris. Thank you. Yes, because the, the steps that we use to attract a partner are the same steps that you use to keep that passion and keep that attraction alive within relationships. So yeah, the course is, is, yes, primarily focused on attracting your partner. But if you think about it from that perspective of attracting your partner, if you're in relationship, these same tools, these same steps will help you to deepen your relationship, to deepen your love. And I've had many women who are in relationship take soulmate school and share that it really positively impacted their relationship. Okay. All right. So let me see this quick. There's one more. Okay. So there's a question here and it's a little bit of a long one. So let's see if I can if I can summarize. Okay, this is from Tammy. Uh, thanks, Tammy. She's giving me some compliments. <laughs> okay, so she's saying that she's been cheated on in most relationships and um, her ex-husband cheated on her and that pattern keeps going over again. So yes, if you want to learn how to stop attracting the same kind of cheating man, yes, hopefully... Well, not hopefully. Yes, you can shift that. Absolutely. And what happens is, like I said, that energetic imprint is what's creating that pattern. And so as you shift whatever is the belief within you, so it could be that you, and I forgot to focus on this during the call. So if you're still listening, uh, hopefully you, uh, you, you get this. <laughs> Sorry. Blah. Um, coming back to parents. When 
We often learn a lot about relationship from our dynamic, the, the, the dynamic that we witness with our parents. So I don't know, Tammy, what your parents' relationship like was, was like with each other, but that might be something to explore. So start to explore back to, okay, what's the belief underneath me, underneath there that is, a, is causing me to attract that partner? Yeah, and absolutely, we'll explore that in Soulmate School. Absolutely. Okay. And is that all the questions? Let's see. Oh, here's another one. Oh my gosh. Thanks, Casey. Okay. So Casey's telling me it's after two. <laughs> We've got to wrap it up. That's been an hour. Thank you so much for being present. I really appreciate you listening and being present and watching today. And I'm so excited to be sharing this information with you from my heart. And it just feels really good to be able to give this to you. Again, this webinar is going to be available. It's going to be up on YouTube. I think we'll put it on YouTube. Anyway, you'll have the link. <laughs> Casey will get it to you and you will be able to access and come back to it anytime. So thank you again so much. And if Soulmate School is calling to you, I look forward to seeing you there and hanging out with you in the chat rooms and Facebook group there. Thank you. Thank you all so much.